On our interview segment, we return to the issue of domestic violence. The engagement with the people during the awareness talk yielded issues of provocation as a likely defense for domestic violence and much more. I sat down with Honorable Ade Fumilayo Tejosho to look at the domestic violence law and some of its provisions. I realize that we have to lift the veil of domestic violence and let people know that violence is violence, whether it happens in the home or outside the home, whether it happens with a familiar face or with a stranger. And then we have to realize that what is the face of an abuser? It's not really the face of a poor man or the face of a rich man. Poor people are abusers, um, rich people are. Is it the face of a man or the face of a woman? No, it is not. It can be either or. So we realize that it transcends gender. It is something that we have to take very seriously because a lot of violence that happens in the home results to death. You know, we've had people go through acid bath. We've had people being macheted by their, their husbands. We've had people, you know, just go through torture that eventually leads to death. And this was the reason why I felt when I came to the House, because I'd been doing, I'm working on that before I came to the House of Assembly, that we need a law that would actually, because you know, when you talk about um, getting a restraining order, you have to be going through a uh, divorce legally in, with the courts or have a separation order put in place by the courts. And we realize that the women don't really want their marriages to end. They just want the violence to stop. So what do we do? How do we get the violence to stop? There must be a law that would address domestic violence as it stands and not just a, be a general law on violence against women or, or criminal law that talks about abuse, attacks and, and stuff like that because that already exists in the laws of, of our state. So because of the sensitivity of this matter and because a lot of women go to the police station or used to go to the police station and they'll tell them, oh, go back home and be a good and obedient wife. We had to make sure that as I, as I came into the House of Assembly in 2003, I felt that I needed to pass a private member bill that would address the situation because I, I see that sometimes when it comes to gender issues, it's not probably taken seriously enough. So the good thing about the, the domestic violence law is that it's not really a gender bill but at least it will save the women that are going through abuse, just like it will save men. There are some women that um, they, they abuse their spouse as well. They abuse the man that, oh, you know, you know, with a man, when you attack his manhood, you can't even do anything in bed. You are a useless man. Or the, the man gives them money. Is this what your mates are giving their wives? And you go on and on with verbal abuse. It's, it's not a, really a one-off thing. It goes on and on and on, and it becomes a kind of emotional torture to the man or even to the woman. And then there's the straw that breaks the camel's back and something happens. So we have to treat all these matters, you know, separately, individually. You have physical violence, you have emotional violence, you have deprivation, where you deprive the person of food, you deprive the person of attention, of emotion, of love, the, those kind of things are forms of abuse that happen in the home front. So it's not just you hit a woman or you slap a man or you, you stab a woman or, you know, it, it varies. Now we know that, you know, with, with um, African people, they say, that you can't go to court and continue as friends when you leave court. So we, we know that there's a kind of, um, you know, reservation in going to court. So what we have done is that the matter does not have to be heard in the court, as, as we say, but it can be heard privately. It is a law to make sure that, you know, you can go to court on it. They, when you ask for a restraining order against your spouse, there is also in place a, um, a, a warrant of arrest. So it's just like the normal criminal process. It's quite, quite sorry criminal law because they are, they are, there's punishment for the offenses. Like if the, it's not on simply because you can beat the woman, but if there's a restraining order, there's uh, saying don't go to this place or don't do this and you go ahead, then you are 
you know, breaching the law and there are consequences for breaching the law. So the law is helping to make sure that these things don't continue. And also, to be able to get those things, you don't have to go through divorce or separation, like I said. And we realize that a lot of these women, they want the violence to stop. They do not want their marriages to end. So how do we stop this violence without ending the marriage? The law says that they will hear the matter in private. The judge can choose to hear it in the chamber or where, what have you, but ex external people will not be involved in it. For example, the abused person can bring one or two people for support, emotional support. So she will choose who she wants to bring with her. The, the abuser also can choose whoever he or she wants to bring to court. So, so it's not, is a, limited it's to limited to the affected persons. So there's privacy. Sometimes the, the magistrate or, or, or judge can decide to take it inside her office and just listen to them privately and make the pronouncement if there's a restraining order to be put in place, if there's, and then where we talk about counseling is that the law provides that in every local government or LCDA, there must be a counseling center where when, when people have those problems, they can go there to talk to them and they would be able to counsel them as to what to, because you know, when somebody is in distress, when somebody is you know, upset or whatever, you might not be able to think right. But the counselors are trained to be able to counsel them and tell them, you know, this is what you do, this is what, they invite both, both parties and talk to them. And um, whether we like it or not, we do have a tradition where, where there's problem in the family, you can call a, an elderly family member or somebody that is, um, you know, well known in the society, that is respected leader. in the society, like a religious leader or an elder that would come and counsel, talk to them and let everything come to an end. But some people don't have that. Some people don't have anybody that they'll cry to for help. So the counselors are there to counsel them and try to make sure they solve the problem. Now, the, the, if the restraining order is in, in place, the restraining order will be in place until we're satisfied as a court that you know, this problem has you know, been put, put to rest and then you know, they can continue to live together as a happy family and then the re re restraining order will be set aside. So basically with, with this um, law, it's really just to make sure that we end the abuse and still keep the marriage intact. Now one of the things that came up during our work and our interactions with members of the public was the issue of the defense of provocation for the violator. Is that a defense that is tenable in law? Well, you cannot, you cannot really rely on provocation. You cannot be beating people because you want to beat somebody or because the person has offended you. You cannot say that because your wife came home late, you will now start beating her. Because you can say you are provoked. You know, I told her to come home at 5 o'clock. She's back at 10 o'clock. You, should be, you are adults, for goodness sake. You should be able to communicate. When we're raising our children, we tell them, use your words. Don't fight. Because children like to fight. If you do anything to them, they might not know what to do. They hit the other child. But when you train your child, use your words. When your child grows up as an adult, he should be able to use his words. And the thing is that when you claim that you are provoked and you beat this woman and you kill her, how are you going to get out of it? Provocation that was, well, did she attack you? Now, let's talk about provocation. Even in the law, a, a, an action and a reaction must be equal. I can, you cannot tell me because I said you're a stupid woman. You now take an ax and attack me and hit me with it. It's, there's no correlation. It's ridiculous. You understand what I'm saying? So when the, the, the woman is provoking you, so you are beating her black and blue. So it, it, does, it wouldn't hold water in court anyway, even if you want to take it outside domestic violence. But the fact still remains that if the woman is the one hitting the man, you, you get what I'm saying, then she's also liable. So it has to be a, a give and take thing. Another thing we heard during the walk was the issue of sentence for the violator. Different figures were bandied. Some people said two year jail term, for the violator. Some people said three years. Some other people even said life imprisonment. But what does the law say about sentencing? Criminal law has the penalties, the punishments for whatever offense it is. So the, the law is not going to give another definition of what the, the offense is. 
the law has not even specified that you are going to have 20 years for this, 20, 30, or 100 years, or whatever. The law is saying that if you breach the restraining order, because basically what the law is talking about is that there will be a restraining order. That's the only place where we're talking about punishment. There will be a restraining order put in place. If you breach the restraining order, for example, they say don't go to that part of the house. You go to that part of the house, but you are not hitting the woman. You are still in breach of the restraining order. If, you, if it's not uncomfortable to her, obviously she's not going to complain. But if there's a problem, the judge is the one that is going to use their discretion, as, not as in what I like as a judge, but as in what the law stipulates as to punishment for if those attacks occur. So you, you don't want to go to jail. You don't hit your wife. I mean, the woman is entitled to have some kind of peaceful enjoyment of her home. And like I always tell people, when a woman gives up her father's name and says, I want to marry this man, she's not giving up her right to life. And we must understand it. And if the men do not want to go to prison, they must, they must not do those things. In this world, we have to have rules and regulations. At the Yoruba people will say, if there, are no, if there are no laws in place, you can't breach an offense, you can't commit an offense, and you will not be punished for it. But where the law says don't do this, the law would have, you, you know, to pass anything into law, any bill into law, there's a public hearing. People will come and say what they feel. And with this domestic violence law, the men and women of Lagos State came to tell us what they felt should be the penalties. And basically, we're saying that if we're trying to save the marriage, we're trying as much as possible not to put the man in jail. And that is why the steps are so long before he's actually taken to, to, to detention or, or, or what have you, because he has breached the law. That means you are going through a process. You go to court, they talk to you, they tell you, okay, there's a restraining order. You can take, there are things called motion ex parte, where, where you can do it behind the man's back, but still yet, he will be notified that this is the thing that is, is in place at the present time. There will be a, a warrant already pending for him that if you breach it, this is what is going to happen. And you are not ignorant of it. There's, there are counseling centers. They will go through, the, the judge will actually say, before they lock you up, go through um, counseling. So no, no, the, job, the law is not asking that they go and lock a man or lock a woman up. The law is saying that we should look at the problem and see how we're going to solve the problem. That's the program for this week. We'll take feedbacks on any of our platforms showing on your screen. If you missed any part of this program, you can find it on past episodes on our YouTube channel. I'm Shala Shieli. Thank you for watching.